So okay. I just knew I wanted to be in business. How I kind of got into this, uh, I do work in the technology field. But how I really got into this is, you know, one day I went go-karting and I was just like stuck behind the person in front of me. And this guy was really, really good. I'm telling you, you know. So in go-karting, they got something called overtake where you try to find like an opportunity to pass them around the corners. And this guy was just hitting all his corners close to the edge. Like I couldn't get past them. And I was like, man, I wish I could take a page out of Mario Kart and like throw a turtle shell at this brother. And, slow him down. and uh, when I got off the go-karts, man, I just I couldn't stop talking. But I was talking to friends and family like, man, what if, what if, what if? And they was like, man. If you can't stop talking about it, maybe you should be the one to make it happen. And so that was back in 2014. And uh, in 2021, we were officially granted the patents, the patents over this technology. So we have exclusivity until year 2040. Welcome to the Let Bob Podcast. It's your boy, Ant. We got another exciting episode of the podcast today. Got another Black King in the building with us today. Another founder of an awesome company he's gonna tell us all about it name of the company is emotional ideas these guys have created an amazing technology that allow for something new called battle racing we're gonna all learn today what that is and what it's about and the founder and ceo is with us today mr joshua nelson how you doing my brother? Mr. nelson how's it going all good all good happy to be alive <laughs> oh man same here same here so talk to us First, about emotional ideas. So, tell us a little bit about the company. So, emotional ideas is a sports and entertainment technology company. Our goal is to take amusement products, games, and attractions that most people grew up with, and find a way to make it more relative to the current generation. So, first, we're starting with the uh, sport of motorsport, but more specifically, go karting. A lot of people don't know that, like uh, NASCAR started in. Like 1948, Formula One in 1950, and then that go karts were invented in 1956. We're here in 2023, 60 something plus years later, and nothing has changed outside of going from gas vehicles to electric vehicles. And so I kind of want to change all that. You know, uh, I really truly feel that the current landscape of racing is kind of boring. I hate to say it like that. <laughs> you know, I kind of feel like people don't really want to watch a car go left for 200 laps. No shade to NASCAR is just, you know, hey. Uh, so my company has set out to kind of change the viewpoint on racing and gaming. And um, so, again, my company is a sports and technology company, and we're using our technology to change the way that everyone sees racing. And we're using something that a lot of people grew up with to make the change. No, that's cool stuff, man. So you got my vote because I love racing. Uh, 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 motorcycles uh, is what I came up racing on. I grew up on yeah. four wheelers, ATVs. Yeah, in the woods. So uh, definitely raced a lot with that. Uh, and then now my kids, I have them on on ATVs, and I just purchased a go kart yeah. for them here too. So that's okay, okay, yeah. So much like you said, like going around in circles, it could. If you're driving, it's fun, but if you're watching, it, 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 you got to yeah. love it. <laughs> you got to love it. I kind of feel like the drivers are a little bored, too, but, you know, hey. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So um, that's interesting, though, that space you're in, uh, not being knowledgeable of it, because I don't watch a lot of NASCAR or a lot of that type of racing. So is it a lot of people of color in that space, or are you kind of pioneering your way in yeah. I mean, uh, as you all know, NASCAR hasn't really been a place yeah. for people that look like us. But they're trying to make changes. Uh, Michael Jordan bought a team. Floyd Mayweather has a team. You know, everybody always talks about Bubba Wallace, the one of the black drivers that's in NASCAR. But I, I think we need something completely, completely different. Uh, yeah. I would say that my product is more so leaning toward the gaming and the esports side of things. Okay. So I like to say that uh, our product is built for drivers, but designed for gamers. That's oh, kind of like our cool. tagline for our product. So our product is actually called the Battle Console RS1, Recreational Series 1. So essentially our product is like a gaming console, like a PlayStation or Xbox or a Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Xbox or Nintendo that attaches onto an existing go-kart. So we take off the body shell, we take off the steering wheel, and we've created our own gamified uh, console that attaches onto the system. So now, instead of just driving around and seeing who has the fastest car or who can go around the fastest, now you have um, we have now supplemented uh, virtual gaming on top of physical reality. So now as you're actually driving around, you can actually shoot the vehicle ahead of you or behind you, speed boost around them, or a toggle rear view camera and see who's behind you or type deal. So it's essentially bringing every 
person's dream that play video games around the early 90s to life, uh, basically real life Mario Kart. That's the best way I can explain it. So I'm essentially trying to create, uh, introduce combat motorsports, you know, without people actually blowing up. And there's no need for a VR headset. But you are just as you are in your car. You don't stare at your dashboard. You glance at it to see your RPMs, your miles per hour, and you're looking at the road. That's the same way we've in, uh, invented our technology. Is that the buttons, the steering wheel has buttons and triggers, just like a gaming controller. You have display screens to show you your performance indicators, place of the race, lap of the uh, lap count, what power item you have, how much health is in your vehicle. And that right there is really what would make this sport of battle racing different. And it is not about who can pay to build the fastest vehicle. So that's kind of the way it is now. I want to create, what I love about video games is that no matter how good you are versus how good I am, when we play a video game, we both sit down. It's up to your individual skill to say you're better. I want to bring that to the sport of racing. So battle racing is set to create a, a competitive atmosphere where now gamers can just equally feel like they got some say. And so I kind of joke with my team all the time. I said, I'm, I'm excited when we start marketing and we take a professional race car driver versus a professional gamer and let them race on the track. Who's better? Somebody that fully understands driving mechanics or somebody that's very proficient in strategy and skill? No, nah, that sounds that sounds really exciting, man. No, nah, that's, create, that's creative also, man. Like, I've never heard of anything like that. <laughs> um, so you are you guys the first to do this or did you see it somewhere and now you just kind of make evolving it or did you so, like come up with this idea? So there's other companies around the world have attempted something like this. What makes us different is that everyone else that has tempted to gamify racing, as I was saying, uh, typically stops it at being something for fun. Okay. We're taking it two steps above fun and making it competitive. Now, we know that all sports start off as fun before it became competitive. So that's our way into the market. But yeah. we're designing this to be a sport. So a lot of people look at what we're building and say, oh, that's an attraction ride. I say, no, this is an attraction sport. So something you can come do for fun or you can come compete and be the best in your city. Our whole goal is that our technology will be initially placed on amusement go-karts as a fun way to introduce battle racing to the world. But then we're going to take this same technology and put it on a bigger, faster vehicle to create a pro league in addition to NASCAR Formula One, a new industry vertical, if you will. Oh, that's slick, man. I like that. So where are you? Where are you located? Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, you in Memphis? Oh, okay. Hi. Born and raised. Yeah. That's what's up. Nah, yeah. man. Like Memphis, man. We'll be. I'll be in Memphis in the next couple of months, man. Um, on a little, a little bar campaign. We're okay, just holler me when you're in town. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I want to come with all these go cards. Okay. Uh, yeah, I want to come check you out. Um, but now nah, Memphis is is. I'm hearing a lot of lots going on in Memphis. For people yeah. who look like us, I'm hearing a lot of exciting things. Um, that's I agree. I'm trying to come up there. I'm actually glad you said that. You know, when people think about Memphis, you know, we, they think music, you know, they think sports. But I'm excited to kind of show something outside of the norm. When I say sports, you know, you think about football, basketball, you know, University of Memphis and the Memphis Grizzlies, that's how the Titans up in Nashville. Yeah. Um, I'm more so excited to show that there's another side to Memphis as well. Outside of the Yo Gotti's and black youngsters and all of that. There's uh, there's there's more talent. There's more things that's being developed here in this city. And so I'm happy to kind of promote that. Yeah, anytime I talk about Memphis, I'll have I always have to say RP to my boy Dolph. That was my dude, yeah. man. I ain't gonna lie, man. I was very big supporter <laughs> of his music and just his entrepreneurship spirit just yeah. in general. Yeah. Um no, it's a lot going on there, man. That's always exciting for our brand to see that because you know we're all about black owned business. So to see all these Different yeah. brothers too, young black men doing all this stuff is is, is yeah. exciting stuff. And well, so you, you know say pressure make diamonds, right? So yeah, it's a lot yeah. of pressure here in Memphis. So it's a lot of diamonds coming out of this city. Oh, that's nice, man. So did you go um, to school for tech, or how did you get into the technology space? So I got my degree from University of Memphis in business management. So okay. I just knew I wanted to be in business. How I kind of got into this, uh, I do work in the technology field. But how I really got into this is, you know, one day I went go-karting and I was just like stuck behind the person in front of me. And this guy was really, really good. I'm telling you, you know. So in go-karting, they got something called overtake where you try to find like an opportunity to pass them around the corners. And this guy was just hitting all his corners close to the edge. Like I couldn't get past him. And I was like, man, I wish I could take a page out of Mario Kart and like throw a turtle shell at this brother. And, slow him down. and uh, when I got off the go-karts, man, I just I couldn't stop talking. But I was talking to friends and family like, man, what if, what if, what if? And they was like, man. If you can't stop talking about it, maybe you should be the one to make it happen. And so that was back in 2014. And uh, in 2021, we were officially granted the patents 
the patents over this technology. So we have exclusivity until year 2040. And then um, we just completed our prototypes this month. So now we're in the process of shooting a demo video to show the world what we're working on. And then we're raising our next round of funding. No, nah, man. No, nah, this is exciting, man. Oh, I, yeah. I love it. So I'm assuming you're talking about the Autobahn when you're on the go-kart. Uh, yeah, you talking about here in Memphis? Yeah, do they have an Autobahn in Memphis? Yes, they do have an Autobahn, but I was at an old school place they call Put Put. That's been here like this forever. <laughs> okay. I was on the old school gas go karts. Yeah. Oh, okay, nah. So Autobahn they had these electric go karts that go like fifty miles per hour. They have them. They have one yeah. here in Birmingham. Yeah, and yeah, man, yeah. I love it. Ooh, yeah, wow. I mean, the track sucks, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, nah, that's good stuff, man. That's good stuff. Yeah, you yeah. Say, so y'all got y'all pants, man. This is exciting, man. I love it. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of our sleeves that people don't realize. Uh, one thing I'll share with you is one of our patents covered the ability to add a selfie camera on the go-karts. Okay. So you can stream your race in real time over social media. So let's just say, you know, you and I were friends over so, uh, Facebook and uh, I was at a place with the go-karts and you was actually following me. And if okay. I got in the go-kart and went live, you would get a notification that says, Joshua, this battle racing live, would you like to watch? And so wow. from the comfort of your home and your device, you can see what place the race I'm in, what lap I'm on, what power item I got hit by. There's a microphone in my helmet so you can hear me. And what's even more cool is that you can send me like a emoji thumbs up. So while I'm racing, I can see how many people are watching me. I can see emojis going up the screen, just like you see when someone goes live. I just yeah. can't see who sent them. So we're trying to bridge that gap between those that are spectating and those that are driving. For me, I feel because we're we have a goal of creating battle racing as a professional sport, it must also uh, entertain the driver as much as the spectator. I think yeah. a lot of people when they're creating stuff only make it for the person that's immediately enjoying entertainment. I'm already looking down the road. I'm like, no, if this is going to scale, I need both parties to be equally interested, and um, that's kind of the way we're going with it. Now that's slick. So let me make sure I understand though. So are you actually racing? when you're experiencing your your technology or are you at a standstill these are real moving vehicles oh okay that's sweet yeah that's why i said we we want to create we want to introduce combat motorsports okay. you know i don't know one day that might call me the grandfather of combat motorsports i don't know but <laughs> i i, I want to create a sport where it's beyond just who has the fastest vehicle yeah and, uh, you know we're going over and beyond as well we have something called landmines which i like these physical colored floor tags that are placed around the track that changes colors, red, yellow, green. And as you drive your go-karts over there, over them, based off the color, it gives you a said effect. So like green would be like a quick speed boost, red would be like major damage. And what really makes battle racing different from traditional racing is that on every vehicle, we have something called the battle gauge. And the battle gauge is like the health bar for your vehicle. So you got 10 bars. Each bar represents 10% of your speed. So every time you take damage, whether it's major, which is 20%, or minor, which is 10%, your go-kart will reduce in speed in equivalence to your health. So the only way to restore your health is looking for purple landmines. So again, we're creating a sport that's like, okay, you can drive fast, but you better pay attention to those around you, the landmines. Like it's it's a whole game of skill and strategy. Nah, I like it, man. Uh, this is some slick stuff, man. Very creative. Thank uh, you. And I believe uh, to your point, um, from a gaming esport point of view i think it's something that should definitely scale i think the adoption will be there um as a person who plays video games uh it sounds like some i definitely i'm i'm already like man i want to see if i can you know be a piss dummy when i go up there right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, i'm excited we got so many tricks up our sleeve like this i even even share with you half of what we what we're planning to present to the community so um you know my goal is to open up what we call battle racing city hubs across the u.s and they will basically be these 60 to 100,000 square foot open buildings with a custom indoor track uh, that you can come in and race all day. I want to create an environment that, you know, uh, I want to kind of create like a pickup game type of environment where yeah. everybody's kind of standing around waiting to race and they hop in and try to see what score they get at the, at the end of the race so they can rank up and down. And that's something that I'm also very excited about is that we kind of got like a what I call like a repeat customer uh, incentive built in. And it's uh, that at the end of every race, you receive points based off of what position of the race you ended in. Okay. So places one through fifth place, it's in increments of 20. So first place, 100, 80, 60, all the way down to sixth place. And any any place after sixth place, you start to lose points, negatives. And so that uh, is your battle score. And that battle score allows you to be a part of what we call a battle ranking. And that battle ranking allows you to go between bronze, silver, gold, and such. So you're constantly going up and down to see where you rank at the end of every month. And 
You know, I want to get in a position where I can do cash prize tournaments every every month and pay some people bills. You know, <laughs> nah, nah, that's real slick, man. That's real slick. So, so talk to us about some of the challenges that you faced in this journey. You know, it sounds like you've achieved so yeah. much. <laughs> you know, but um, often uh, onlookers think that with success, it was easy. It was simple. Like you just got the pad and you just no. you know, been gravy. Right. So talk to us about some of the obstacles you faced. Well, one, I wasn't born into money. I don't have a trust fund. I don't have any yeah. of that. So me building what I'm trying to build, it wasn't like I was trying to open up a lemonade stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, if I have to be frank, I probably kind of gave up on the idea maybe like two times <laughs> since 2014 because it got difficult, you know, because, uh, you know, it takes money to make money. It's just yeah. plain and simple. So uh, I know financial literacy is something that you guys are big on. That's something that I had to learn in order to get to where I'm at today. So when I realized that I was broke and I didn't have the money, I started learning, well, how can I get the money? You know, I kind of learned, you know, they say, don't say what you can't do, say, how can you do it? And so yeah. when I started thinking of how can I, all these ideas popped in my head. Well, I was like, well, maybe credit, maybe it is. And I was like, well, I don't know anything about those things. And so I started educating myself on how credit works and how things of that nature work. So I was in a position where I started learning the credit game, started to uh, increase my credit score, started to be applicable to a lot of credit cards. And I use that to fund where I'm at today. You know, refinance my house, max credit cards, me and my founder did. You know, we did the, the stand away. And then we we did enough to where we was able to get an angel investor in to, to, to put some money behind it. And, you know, people say, well, we're not investing in the, the business. We're investing in you. We like you. We see your tenacity. And I was like, okay, I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate that, but let me show you what I can do with it. And so with that, uh, to date, we raised uh, 280K toward this project. Okay. Um, and but I'm I'm kind of happy to say that even though we have only raised like 280k, what we've done with that 280k should have really cost 700k. Man, okay. So you know, uh, networking is just as important as the money that you have. You know, they say it's not about what you know, who you know. So a lot of that came with discounts. People do it, did favors, helped a brother out because they seen that we was working towards something. So you know, that was that big obstacle is trying to get in a position where even though I had a great idea, people wanted to see a pro product or a prototype. And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to build a prototype with no money? You know, and to as quiet as it kept, I was in my mind, I was like, but I see other people that don't look like me raising millions and they don't, they barely have an idea. I got business plans, IP, all of that, you know? So it was just a matter of believing in, my, believing in what I'm building, having support of those that believe with me. You know, they say you can go faster by yourself, but further with others. So when yeah. I got other people to kind of join the team and get behind me, it was almost like a, a train that I can't stop now. Even if yeah. I wanted to, now that's good. Um, and I think that's from that's familiar to um, you know black entrepreneurs. Uh, access to capital, unfortunately, is one of the greater yeah. challenges in entrepreneurship for, for people of color. Um, but we have to be creative um, in our in our approach and how we get to what we want. Right. More right. importantly, you have to believe enough in your dream and yourself to keep going. Right. Uh, like you say, I, I mean, I'm the founder of, of, of Let Bob Technologies, and what it's become is definitely not what I thought when I first came up with this. You know, it's grown into all these things and what we're doing, and, yeah. and and it was all just because I was obedient enough to stay, you know, with the vision, right? And trust God's plan right. for it, right? Uh, I'm I'm a big believer of, you know, following God's plan. Agree. Sure, whatever I'm doing aligns with what His plan is for me. And uh, choosing people to be a part of that plan accordingly. Um, and I think I've, we've done a good job over here picking, you know, the right people to be a part of the journey. Most definitely. That's I think the hard thing you deal with uh, as a founder is, you know, maybe choosing somebody you think is the right person and then having to cut somebody. I think for me, but, at least, I found that's been a, that was some of the, uh, that's been challenging a couple of times when I've had to do that. I think for me, one of the biggest challenges is, you're needing money. Someone has money, but you don't like the person that has the money. So oh yeah. Decision. Is it, do I really need the money? Is it, is this money worth the potential headache for partnering with this person? That's good. I've, I've turned away a lot of opportunities because to me, the piece of what I'm building needs to be done correctly. And I kind of had this thing where I don't want to let our people down. You know, I'm 30, I, I'm 30 years old. So I had time to kind of like watch what happened with others. And I see how some of us get an opportunity and we drop the ball. Yeah. I don't want to drop the ball and I don't want it to be because I was so greedy and too hasty that I took the first dollar that was uh, presented to me. 
So <laughs> I believe that they have to like me as much as I like them. Uh, and so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Sometimes it's hard when you're still broke and you're still working multiple jobs and you're like, man, I should have took that check. But that peace of mind, knowing that you still have peace in your company, I think is priceless. No, nah, you're dead on, man. Uh, I learned that lesson early on. Um, and it, it matters. It's You have to kind of look at investing like you would a marriage, right? It has yeah. to be uh, a compatibility there yes. uh, because there's going to be some rough times while you're building. Right what you think should happen or what you envision is going to happen or what you have planned out to right. happen may not always happen. It right. may not always happen on time. You may have to pivot. In fact, you will have to pivot. You will have to pivot. Yeah. Who, you, who you partner with, you know, you have to be partner with someone right. who believes in the vision. You know, That's even true. if they have the money, if they don't believe in the vision. To your point, it could, it could definitely cost your peace to your, uh, to your company. So that, I commend you for learning that early to be wise who you take money from. Yeah, that's a big one. I've seen people take money from certain people and, and lose their companies in some right. Yeah. Same. Yeah. So we don't we don't want we don't want that uh that type of pressure on you while you're trying to create uh right. and execute the vision. Yeah. I mean it's, so, only so much you can, it's only so much you can vet people. So I have to pray. I'm at a point now where I will admit I used to get very frustrated when a door was closed. Now I'm at a point now where before I even had to meet, I'm like, Lord, I want your will to be done. If it ain't meant for me to walk through this door, then I'm asking that you close it. Correct. Sometimes you you ask for that, then when it happens, you be like, oh, well, then you have to remind, okay, God, this ain't what you want for me. I know you have my my best in heart. So, you know. It, yeah, no, same here, man. I, I, I say, I call it um, victims of God's plan for me. So my discipline and my obligation is to identify who the victims are. And so when I'm meeting people, when I'm networking, when I'm out, depend, depending on what we're out for, I'm always aware of who's in the room, always. And just listen to their discussion or listen to a discussion or just in a discussion with different people if they are compatible with what we believe and what we're working on. Right. And it's not always that they have to be an investor. You know, it's just good to network with people. Agreed. Have people that you can reach out to and maybe throw an idea off of or, you know, just talk to about what you're trying to achieve. That it's not a monetary benefit for them or for you. It's just a matter of getting an unbiased opinion because they're not in bed with you. Right. I agree. I mean, yeah. I agree 100 percent. My only yeah. issue with that sometimes is that people, you know, how people be. It may have started off with them just giving you advice. And then once you made it, it's like, all right, where's my cut? <laughs> I thought we would just... <laughs> so that's kind of one of those spaces I'm in now. I got everyone calling, wanting to give me advice, and they kind of sneaking, uh, you know, sneaking there how they want a job or how they want some type of royalties. So I'm at a point now where I have to be open and honest with everybody from the get go. Like, what is the nature of this relationship? Because I got a lot of people that I feel like start off like, oh, just call me when you need me. Then it's like, um, when I supposed to get that percentage? What percentage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now nah, you definitely got a point there, and I think that just comes from you know being being black in America, you know, we just, you have to move different. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But you have to always know to your point, if you're obedient to God's plan, you're protected. You know, you live by that rule. Can't nobody, they can't breach it. Right. You know, right. um, I, I was like that early on with Bob. I didn't want to really share a lot about what we were doing or what we had coming up. But um, once I learned if, if it's, if it's God's plan for me, so they can't take right. it. They can't steal it. You right. know, it's for me to do. So I, I'm more open to it now. And it's been beneficial. Um, oh, I've met very smart people. Uh, I meet people like yourself. Like, I've never heard of this. And I'm learning, <laughs> listening to this. I'm like, oh, man, what comes to mind for me is like, what can we do to help this gentleman? How can we help this gentleman? If he needs help, you know, uh, how can we be a resource for him? So um, I tell I you one thing, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you. Um... You interviewed the brothers from Earn Your Leisure, didn't you? I did, yes. You did? I yeah. want to intro to them brothers. That's what you can do for me. <laughs> they want to intro to them, huh? Yes. <laughs> All right, we'll see if we can make something happen, man. Um, and then those guys, I was, even in that interview, you know, I expressed the, the excitement for that because those are yes. young brothers who are yes. doing, you know, some awesome stuff in our community. Inspiring. Very inspiring. And so they, they've done it, right? And they did it. They started from scratch. They're, they're our story, you know, at, at, a, 
not at a peak, but just at a really strong place. Right. To right. hear that story and to talk to him was was definitely exciting. Um, and so we'll see if we can make some shake there, man. <laughs> we'll see if we can make some shake. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I'm excited about the future of what we're doing. I know there's a lot of obstacles. You know, I, I, I've done so much work right now. Like, a lot of people don't know I got, like, three jobs right now, you know, trying to make ends meet because as a startup, everything you got really needs to go to the business unless you really have enough to pay yourself. You know, everyone wants to quickly say, make sure you pay yourself. But how do you, when you only have a limited amount of funds and you have a goal that you need to achieve, paying yourself, it's like, okay, if I pay myself, I may not better make it to this goal. I would rather just... You know, sacrifice. So, you know, like, you know, I got like four jobs. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm always going. I'm like, soon I better get what I need to be able to stop working, to work on, to to be fully vested. I mean, I'm fully vested now, but I mean, I have to go work another job and work an overnight job to pay for this business, to pay for this idea. You know, I got a wife. I got married in 2013 and I have four beautiful children. I just had a set of twins, uh, all with my same wife. Uh, so, uh it's a lot. I'm motivated, but it's 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 pressure. It is. It's a lot of pressure, uh, and I'm I'm glad you're expressing that because that's a side people don't see when they see the result, yeah. right? So when you see earn your leisure for an example, you know they have families, they have uh, times where they've had to grind it out that we most people don't know about. Now right, you just right. see the brand, uh, and you're like, oh man, they're doing this, they're right. doing that. Right. But there's a lot that goes in there, man. It's a lot of days you don't eat. It's a lot of days to your point where you got to choose between paying a light bill, maybe, or paying um, paying a bill for the business. Right. And as a founder, for me, the business, I always get it, you know, um, and and I was fortunate to have a spouse who was, you know, OK with that. And sometimes yeah. that's a challenge. Sometimes, you know, a challenge. spouse may not, you know, agree yeah. with that or your partners may not agree with that. Um, and so balancing that mental uh, pressure yeah. is very I mean, important in the journey. I'm definitely thankful for my wife. You know, she's definitely supported me through and through. You know, she's sacrificed, you know, dropping out of schools and, and doing a lot of things. You know, we have, uh, you know, she stays at home and takes care of the children at the home. Yeah. So even though I work all these jobs and business and such, I couldn't do it if I didn't have the peace of mind that my home and children would be good. You know, right. that kind of pushes me to say, OK, I'm going to take this extra step to risk to do what i need to do because i know that you you know done what you need to do for the household so everything i'm doing now is like i want to make sure that my wife's effort is not in vain <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah nah same here man same here definitely my wife has been very supportive and and has allowed because i have two young kids and so i've been on this grind since 2017 okay and so when i tell you i've been grinding man i've yeah. I, I flew when i needed to fly I've drove when I need to drive. I've not slept when I need to stay up. <laughs> I've done it all. I've learned when I need to learn. I've took yep. tests. I've done everything necessary to keep this ball rolling. Uh, all out of the belief that this is God's plan. But from the support of my wife, uh, my family, all of my business partners, I've had to make uh, business decisions that there was some hard decisions, man. Yeah. Because you're the founder. It's like if you make it, you're right. It's good. Yeah. If you make right. it wrong, you cost everybody some 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 capital, right? Right. Uh, and so I've I've made those decisions. Some have, most have been good, but there there have been some bad decisions in there too. And I've just been fortunate to be surrounded by a good a, a yeah. good network of people to keep yeah. me pushing. Um, yeah. And I it sounds like that's your mix too, and that's good, man. I think yeah. that's um that's smart of you. To have established that kind of structure around yourself to keep the vision going. Yeah, it's been like I said, it's been a struggle, but I'm at a point now where I feel like the people that's a part of my team and that supported me, God sent them, literally. Yeah. And so with them being around, you know, uh, shout out to those guys, the people that's on my team that's helping us. Some of those guys have been rocking me since 2015, some within the last year, some within the last three years. Some I met on working another job. I'm like, hey, I like you, I see your tenacity, come join me. That type of deal. So, you know, I'm thankful. I'm just excited to show everybody what's, what's coming next. And if I would say, I think we are on a, um, I think we're about to make history. You know, black people, you know, they say every time we touch something, it's magical. And when you look at all the different sports, it seems like we'd have made an impact on every sport. I'm looking forward to making an impact on motorsports. Well, look, man, you keep pushing, young man, and you do what you're doing. Uh, we support you. Uh, like I say, 
we'll see if we can make that that intro for you and any other thing that you think we could do as a brand to help you out we're all for it uh do you have any social media you want to provide for our audience to catch yeah. up with you? Uh, you can check out my website, uh, battleracing.com. Make sure you put the .com on the end of that. Uh, if you look on any social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn, just type in Emotional Ideas, Inc., and you will see us. All right, cool, man. I want one of them shirts when I come to Memphis, too. Uh, right? Yeah, uh, this, ain't, this ain't even the, the best of it. You got the... <laughs> okay, all right. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. <laughs> got to have one of those, man. Got to have one of those, please. So we'll, we'll let you know. I should be up there in a couple couple months, man. Uh, we'll, my team will reach out and see if we can get on your schedule. Come check you out and give me one. Of yeah, yeah. Just holler at me. Unfortunately, the prototypes not going to be ready just yet. They're up north in Michigan right now. I'm down in Tennessee, so but we're in the process of getting a facility down here soon. Okay, all right. That's cool. Well, we appreciate you for coming on, man, and sharing your vision and sharing your progress. Uh, again, you got our support, man, and, and we hope uh, that you continue to. You know, strive to achieve your goal, man, and have the success and make history in the in the in the racing industry like you uh, intend to, man. We, we we believe in you over here. Thank you, man. All right, cool. It's been another great episode of Let Bob Podcast. You can find us on all social media, the company at We Are Let Bob, and you can find me personally at I Am Let Bob. And we out.